Kang and Ho is headed to Mujin, and as he's almost there, he gets on a call with his mother. The way to Mujin, where great misery awaits him, is very gloomy. His daughter back home was depressed over his departure. Nothing so far is off to a good start. Inho's mother tells him to not lose spirit as he has given his all to getting it. As Inho is headed to his destination, a kid on the other side is headed to his. Except that little one will reach his final. He allows a train to run him over while Inho narrowly escapes an accident simultaneously. Mujin happens to be a gray somewhere where the wheat continues to bleed dry. Inho accidentally hits an animal and his car stands broken in the doorsteps of Mujin. He brings his now useless vehicle to a repair shop and the fixing will take some time. Inho is in a hurry to go to the Jai Academy, so the repairman suggests he uses a cab. The cab fare is not worth it, so Inho crushes his cigarette and decides to push his car through the rough patch again. Luck was not on his side that day. As he started his car, a woman hit his disabled vehicle in the back and lashed out on him. The woman was about to debut as a Karen, but the repairman knew her and her act flopped. Or it didn't cause she started acting right when the repairman called her out for downing soju all night again. Inho's car is dumpster material at this point, so the alcoholic woman offers to drop him at the school. Her car isn't in a very good condition either, and she's very chatty. She tried to get along with the man, but he was very much in a rush. Anyhow, Inho and the alcoholic lady are acquaintances now. She hands in her business card and her name is Si Yuren, who works at the Mujin Human Rights Center. Inho finally steps into the Jai Academy, the school of death. His first interaction with the kids there did not feel welcoming. Later, he meets up with the principal and Inho is the principal's friend student. The meetup gets unsettling as Chief Lee, who looks exactly like the principal, steps in to meet Inho. Well, Chief Lee and Principal Lee are twins. Chief Lee says something that indicates that there is a secret between him and his twin brother. Inho is told to rest up and that Chief Lee will show him around. Weirdly enough, this chief guy demanded money from Inho when they were alone. At night, Inho calls his mother to ask for $50,000 for some school funds. The next day, Inho is in his class and the assignment is to draw a few apples. One of the student's artwork caught Inho's eyes and he complimented her for it. For some reason, the kid reacted unpleasantly, and her benchmate is silently eating the apple she's supposed to draw. As if the overall environment wasn't odd enough, a boy by the name Minsu enters the class covered in wounds. Inho talks about it to his colleague and mentions the strange nature of the kids there. The colleague mentions that Minsu lost his brother recently and tells Inho to not think much about any of it as the kids are both physically and mentally impaired. Inho is looking at his students' backgrounds and each one of them has it rough. He then talks to his mother while leaving the building. Her mother has sent him the $50,000 and as Inho is talking to her, he hears a blood curly scream coming from the girl's bathroom. Inho follows the screams and as soon as he speaks, they stop. The security guard stops him from opening the door and says that diff kids make weird noises for fun. Principal Lee is having a creepy talk with Inspector Jane in the office. The inspector receives good money for dealing with the kids. Inho drops by to deliver the fun money. Inspector Jane feels somewhat threatened by Inho and tries to corner him. On the other side, all hells are loosing break on Minsu as Mr. Park hits him left and right in the face and stomach. Inho walks into the room and asks Mr. Park why he's hitting the poor guy. Apparently, Minsu had sneaked out at night with two girls and that worried that damn teacher. The other teachers acted like it was a normal occurrence and Minsu avoided Inho out of fear too. Things keep getting weirder for Inho. He was on leaving school when he saw the reflection of a student sitting in a window up high. Worriedly, he runs to her room to prevent any mishap only to scare the kid out. The girl's reaction to his touch was nerve-wracking so he apologizes to her. The aura around him felt safe and the kid instantly developed trust for him. She then takes him to the laundry room and leaves the rest for Inho to watch. Inho enters the room, and there is this witch of a woman washing a breathing, living child in a washing machine. Inho screams at her, and she tells him to stay out of her business because she is Jai, the residence counselor. Inho was pissed, and that wicked monster called him a fool for stepping in. Inho warns her and instantly carries the unconscious Yundu. Inho calls Yurin up to report what he just witnessed. Yundu is in the hospital and Yurin tells Inho to call the girl's parents because this was a case of assault, only to learn the girl is an orphan. Inho brings a complaint to the principal's office and the Lee brothers tell him to not worry as Ms. Yoon has been warned already. Now the way Chief Lee asked for Yandu's location creeped Inho out. Yandu's friend Yuri seems upset that her friend's missing. Inho tries to uplift her by exchanging drawings of each other. It worked and Yuri smiled really wild. Yurin hits Inho up in the evening and asks her to meet her urgently at a food place. She looks very tense and tells Inho that Yandu was used by the principal but he failed because of her age. Inho couldn't believe it, but after reading Yandu's claims and hearing what Yurin had to say, he was speechless. Girls and even boys are constantly...
accepted by the teachers, and upon reporting everything to the police, the poor kids are assaulted severely. Mr. Park's behavior and the kids' anxiety starts making sense to Inho. Yoon Ja is the adopted daughter of the school owner, and she's dating the principal. As Yurin is unleashing all of this, this Satan's child, Jai rushes up to Yandu's hospital room. She had accused Yandu of flirting with his alien-looking man and threatened her with scissors. Inho panicked and rushed to the hospital to protect that kid from Ja. It looked like it was too late, but fortunately, Yandu had seat hiding in a closet. Yurin brought her home to record Yandu's true claims against the principal. The principal had lured Yandu into her office when she was looking for Yuri after her bathroom break. This disgusting vessel of waste showed that little kid inappropriate videos and proceeded to arrest her. Yandu broke through and hid in the bathroom, but finding her wasn't hard for that bastard. Yandu covered her mouth as the feet of that monster appeared under the bathroom stall. The door was locked, and he left which gave Yandu some hope. But the principal's short stature managed to jump into her bathroom stall, and Yandu could only scream helplessly. The screams were heard by Inho that night, and the realization hit him. Yuri drops her drink as she remembers how she was abused by the chief. The details are truly disturbing, and Yuri broke into tears as she disclosed the incident. Yandu was the witness of Yuri's assault, and the chief threatened her with death if she ever opened her mouth about it. Inho can't stop replaying Yandu's screams, and that night, his mother visits him for his wife's memorial. She had brought orchids for the school principal, which enraged Inho. His mother knows the principal and school authorities are corrupt, but has no idea how far deep and ugly the truth is. Inho's mother even sacrificed the house rent for the funds and tells him to turn a blind eye to evil for his daughter and wife's sake. Yurin, on the other hand, is trying to reach out to the authorities regarding the matters, but the cops refuse to do their job. They tell her to bring the case to City Hall instead, and of course, Inspector Jang knows what pure evil is being done to the kids in that school. Yurin asks him why he isn't investigating the case, and he says all the corny things about Principal Lee any greedy money bagger would. Yurin had locked herself out of the car, and when she received the good news of Sewell reporters covering their case, she shattered the glass window right away. Mr. Park is mercilessly hitting Minsu again, because Yandu and Yuri can't be tracked. Minsu didn't respond, which infuriated Mr. Park more. He picks up a golf club and takes Minsu outside the principal's office to punish him. Inho had been hearing Minsu's helpless cries from across the door with the orchids in his hands. He follows Mr. Park to smash his head with that pot and brings Minsu to Yurin's office to record his claims. Minsu finally opens up about his brother. Mr. Park once brought Minsu and his brother to his house against their will and molested the younger one in the bathroom. Minsu witnessed it all and kept crying to stop that monster. His cries infuriated Mr. Park, and he started hitting him like a cold-blooded murderer. Minsu's little brother was traumatized by everything that happened to him and his brother. After a few hours, Mr. Park went into a deep sleep, and Minsu regained consciousness. The little one was missing, and Minsu couldn't find him outside either. Mr. Park woke up and began the cruelty again. Minsu's confession was live, and those three animals were finally arrested. The inspector still had the twins back even though his jaw was at risk. He suggests they use their connections to deny all the allegations. The blind people of Mujin can't see through the evil and are protesting outside the court. The hearing is about to begin and Yurin learns that the Lee brothers' lawyer is favored and very privileged. The sight of the twins entering the court disgusts everyone and the hearing begins. Principal Lee starts spouting the same political crap every monster does and the deep people in the court demand an interpreter to understand what he's saying. Yurin demands the same and she is kicked out of the court by the judge for interruption. After the hearing ends, Principal Lee's wife slaps Inho across the face and gets in a fight with Yurin as well. On their way back, Yurin scolds Inho for being so naive. He doesn't say anything and asks her to let him stay at her office. The two get dinner together and Inho envies Yurin who isn't any better. She asks him if he regrets participating in the case, and Inho just takes another shot of his drink. Later that night, Inho talks to his mother on phone as usual and tells her to not visit him because he's busy. The trial resumes the next day and the school's guard is brought in as a witness. The twins feed him well so nothing comes out of his mouth. The guard keeps praising the twins and denies seeing them do anything suspicious. The Lee brother's attorney brings up the night Inho heard the scream outside the girl's bathroom. The guard tells the judge that nothing was going on inside and Yandu becomes dispirited. Inho comforts her and the kid's attorney tells the guard to reveal his past jobs. Turns out this creep had a criminal history and he was hired as a guard by reference. He's siding with the Lees because he'll be jobless and homeless if they go down because of the case. The Lee brother's attorney has brought an Obi Jin into the court to refute the other party. Her organs were damaged, but the Obi Jin invalidates the pain Yuri bore. She also tells the court that the kid looked too calm for a victim, and turns out this crap of a human is the head counsel of the school. The kid's attorney exposes the doctor for writing Yuri's diagnosis twice, 
and she gets very nervous. The first one mentioned that the Yuri's organ damages resulted from sexual relations, but the whole thing was changed in the second diagnosis. It was also revealed that Yuri's hymen broke when she was just nine years old and Lee Brothers accuses the nine-year-old Yuri to consent to everything that happened to her. Everyone lost their appetite after the trial except Yuri and everyone smiled at her. The five of them go to the beach to change the mood and Yandu tells Inho how lovely it was to be with her family there. She could hear everything back then and now the world has gone quiet for her. Inho comforts her like a father and tells her that the world isn't quiet. She just needs to feel it speak through her heart. Minsu and Yuri made sand castles with urine. The day was hectic, but all five of them left the beach with calm and warm minds. Yuri wishes Inho and Yurin were her parents and knowing that flustered Yurin. The next day, Yuri is brought in as the victim in the courtroom and the Lees act like they don't know her well. The chief says he only remembers feeling bad for her for being so pitiful. Mr. Park, an equal piece of crap, is sitting right beside them. The kid's lawyer asks Yuri to point out the men who molested her. She pointed at all three of them, and the gruesome details of how Chief Lee abused her are also revealed by the kid. She had to live through that hell once again when she mentioned that it all began in her third grade. The chief would pay her one dollar for cookies and tie her every time she ran away from him. The flashbacks start replaying in Yuri's head and Chief Lee gets up from his chair to deny everything. The reporter told Yurin that those evil bastards might settle the case after paying the kid's parents. Minsu and Yuri's parents are mentally disabled and the school administrators will definitely buy them. Yandu is the only orphan there and can't be shut down. Then, Inho's art professor Kim calls Inho over to persuade him to withdraw from the case. Lee brother's attorney was there too, and Inho was offered money and a job in Seoul in return. Yandu's good future was also promised and Inho gets up to leave. Attorney Huan reminds Inho of his sick daughter before he leaves. Inho hated every bit of this deal and broke his car's window out of anger. On the other hand, Yuri's relatives sold her for money, and Yurin was very disheartened to hear that. Hope was still there and Yandu was ready to testify in the court. Before the trial began, Inho's mother came rushing in and scolded him for standing against prejudice. She asks Inho if Yandu is more important than his daughter, but Inho really just wants to help Yandu out as Saul's father. The trial finally begins, and Yandu is asked to recognize Principal Lee who molested her. The kid's attorney didn't find that fair, but attorney Huang says he's following the law. The judge allows attorney Huang to continue the interrogation and Yandu asks for permission to look the twins up close. She says something her criminal said to her in sign language and only Principal Lee reacted to it. Yandu used her brains and pointed correctly at the principal. Yandu tells the judge that only Principal Lee knows sign language and had threatened to kill Yandu using it back when Yuri was arrested in the principal's office. Attorney Huang revises the whole incident which included Yandu hearing faint music coming from the office where Yuri was getting abused. Attorney Huang caught up on that and argues back saying Yandu is deaf and can't hear music which only means she's lying. Yandu speaks up and tells the judge that she is not lying. She indeed can hear music despite being deaf. So a test is carried out to find the truth in front of everyone. The song is played and Yandu passes the test. Yandu's claims are accepted and Inho's mother leaves the court after handing some snacks for the kids to Inho. Yurin is on her way to Minsu's house where she runs into Jai who had already settled the matter with Minsu's grandmother through money. Jai used every odd Minsu's family was going through for her advantage which made Yurin cry. She looks at the poor old woman and pities her. Minsu was desperately waiting to testify in the court but sadly it was cancelled. Minsu felt like an abandoned puppy when he learned about everything and had a mental breakdown in front of Inho. He felt betrayed and torn apart while Inho embraced him. It was midnight and Yandu told Inho something she forgot to mention during the trial. It had something to do with the principal's office and Yurin and Inho left to investigate right away. Turns out there was a security camera installed on the rooftop which recorded the entire assault. Inho and Yurin brought the recording to their lawyer and Yuri was over 13 years old the day she was assaulted. This means that Yuri's case won't be settled with money and the video evidence will be brought to the judge by the kid's attorney himself. It is finally the last hearing and Inho is expecting justice from the court. Lee Brothers and Mr. Park was sentenced to punishments after the settlement between the opposite party and the victim's parents. Hearing the judge out made the victim's side of the audience very mad. It was a mess in the courtroom and Inho looked at their attorney with a defeated look. Yurin was very out of place too and the victim's scars only deepened. It felt like another hell. Inho plans to leave the place and apologizes to Yurin for not being of much help. The Lee Brothers thanked attorney Huang for turning the tables for them. Attorney Huang promised the kid's prosecutor a seat in his own firm which he accepted. That's how these monsters were set free, but Minsu wasn't ready to accept this sad reality. His blood boiled with rage, and he left home to take his revenge. 
Yurin tells Inho about it and he starts driving back to follow Minsu. Minsu had already chased Mr. Park down and seized the chance to stab him without hesitating. The two were on the rail track and even after getting stabbed, Mr. Park kicked Minsu in the face multiple times. Inho was desperately looking for Minsu and finally found him, but it was too late. Mr. Park was dominating Minsu, but the boy stabbed that bastard's foot one last time as the train headed their way. Minsu pressed on Park's wounds to give vent to his anger. The train couldn't be stopped, and it ran over Minsu and Mr. Park. Minsu lost his life, but he died a hero. The people were protesting and demanding justice for the kids and Minsu. Inspector Jane kept telling the people to free the street, but no one budged a bit. The judge's car finally arrived, and the locals started throwing eggs at his cars. The public was enraged, and the police tried to stop them. It was a huge disaster outside. People were getting dragged like objects by the police as the water tanks did their work. Inho walked out of the morning camp Camp and started begging for justice for Minsu. No one except Yurin, who was getting dragged by the police, was listening to him. The sight was heartbreaking and Inho was arrested by the police too. Yandu and Yuri cried as the universe was unfair to them once again. And just like that, a year had passed and Yurin mails Inho to update him about Yuri and Yandu's life. Even though the court refused to hear them out again, the girls are doing well and other kids from the school are safe too. Although Inho misses his friends back there, Mujin is still infested with the putrid bugs who suck the sweetness out of the delicate.